Welcome, my name is Marcus Fares. I'm founder and editor-in-chief of Design, the online architecture and design magazine. And we have a, a great lineup tonight. We have uh, Jonathan Levine and Nipa Doshi of Doshi Levine, who are a couple, but for some reason have decided not to sit together tonight. I don't know, maybe there's been is some... Is that surprising? <laughs> 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 and they've created a Giulio Rodolfo sandwich, because in the middle... Yeah, an Italian <laughs> <laughs> the prosciutto in the middle of that Anglo-Indian sandwich <laughs> is <laughs> Giulio Rodolfo. It's so late, we're all drunk already, so this is going to be a good talk, right? Um, it's Giulio Rodolfo. He is a color and textile designer who works for all kinds of companies, uh, particularly Kvadrat. And Kvadrat collaborate with Morozo on a lot of their textiles. And in fact, um, I think all of the textiles in this little zone we're sitting in have been designed by you. Is that correct, Giulio? It's correct, yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? It's, it's, it's working. You need to hold the uh, microphones super close to your, your mouth. Can we nice to meet you. Uh, I'm quite glad to be in between. Like it's like I don't need too much ham, but I like to be the position of ham inside these two guys. <laughs> because we, it's a, such a long way path that we did it for many, many years. And so to be here together after a lot of fights and a lot of struggles for defining some lines, some let's say, uh, approach to beauty has always been something that uh, connected us in life. And um, I, I got a, I got a, an uh, SMS from Patrizia Moroso last week saying, because um, th this was supposed to be about Doshi and Levine, and I think the invitation you all sent was that they were going to talk about objects out of space, not outer space objects, which is what I thought it was going to be, but objects out of space. And she was, Marcus, sorry, sorry, is it okay? Julio Rodolfo, he in London, he'll come to the talk. And I was Mafia. like, <laughs> it's absolutely fine, because we met each other a long time ago, didn't we? We were on some um, trends panel together, and Julio is a, is a genuinely um, I super influential person in the design world. So, Nipper and Jonathan are going go to go give a talk first, and then they're going to talk about how they, how they design objects, and um, partic um, particularly this idea of how they design objects which are related to architectural space, but also their relationship with Moroso, which was the brand that propelled them to where they are now in design. And then Julio is going to talk a little bit about how he interacts with designers and with the brand of Moroso, and, and how he approaches color and, and the fabric design. And then we'll see whether we have, feel like having a debate or whether we just want to head straight back to the bar and, and get dancing to our fabulous DJ over there, AJ, a the neighbor of mine. Yo, respect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is the best, this is really the best. I do a lot of talks, but this is the best place to do a talk. Thank you, Moroso. It's always such fun down here. And it's like, who's been to a uh, talk down here before? Because when the yeah. talking stops, the party, I mean, it really kicks off. So don't leave. <laughs> anyway, Nipper and Jonathan, take it away. Um, just a little uh, uh, background in a way. Um, uh, I can you hear me now? Yes. Ah, OK. You have to be close, really close. close. Mouth, oh my god, yeah. that's too rest close. It, rest it on your chin. You know, women wear lipstick. <laughs> you know, anyway. No, your chin, your chin. Unless you um, wear lipstick on your chin. It's, um, you know, my background um, in design, in a way, is very modern. I, uh, you know, I grew up in India. I studied in a design school founded by Charles and Ray Eames in the 60s, where they wrote, wrote this fantastic manifesto for design. And my college was opposite a Corbusier uh, museum. My aunt, uh, aunt's house was designed by his assistant, and, and the family uh, house was also designed by Corbusier. So in a way, I grew up with this incredible legacy of um, modern design. A and yet also, uh, my grandma's house was an art deco house. And, and right next to it, you would have a shanty town. And they had a house in the country, which was an old-fashioned Indian um, uh, you know, town, a country house. So I think in a way I grew up thinking that Art Deco uh, was a distinct uh, architecture style from Bombay. That a Vespa scooter, in fact, was an Indian design. And, um, and modern architecture was what defined my urban environment. So you can imagine, to my horror, when I grew up and actually went to design school, I discovered that all the things that I thought were Indian were, in fact, not Indian at all. And I think this plurality uh, of my environment, um, you know, where you go to all parts of... Um, <laughs> 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 one day or 30 days? 
<laughs> what should we go for? I think the Betty with the table. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're shopping now. Is someone looking after it? Let's close that. So I think that um, in a way that plurality um, of the environment that I grew up in is something um, that I took for granted, in fact, till I came to, to Europe. Also realized that everything that I've learned in design, especially in, in, in school, most of it was already developed and done uh, in the UK, where I came um, to the Royal College of Art, and I met John. John. Hi, good evening. Um, so, Nipper and I, when we started out, we tried to find a way to create a unique voice that only we could produce together. And it came to us the idea to work with um, uh, our culture, to combine Indian culture and European culture. And we had this opportunity in 2005, offered to us by the British Council to create a collection of objects that would celebrate the coming together of our cultures. And so in the beginning, we created these pieces that were kind of born from the Indian culture, but then we transferred into European culture. And for example, the, the water vessel that you see here. Um, I think, in a way, this was the, also the beginning of our relationship with uh, Patricia Malosa. Because as a part of this exhibition, we created this mattress, which was hand-stitched in India. And Patricia came to our studio and she saw the work that we'd done. And she saw this opportunity to create a show for Milan in 2007. And this was really the first time that we had this kind of um, uh, international stage um, and uh, combined the best of both worlds of the European industrial production and Indian hand craftsmanship. What was really, um, uh, in a way, I think that what we were thinking is that, you know, at that point, we didn't realize the power of Italian design and how important it was to be in Milan because obviously we were working with all these big corporate uh, 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 companies. And when we launched this collection in Milan, of course, the fact that this was, you know, and this is still 2007, so you can imagine that you know, things, most of the Italian brands were very conservative and everything was very um, beige, would you say, Julio? It was the air of the northeast of Italy, you have to understand. <laughs> you not, not Brianza. <laughs> no. So I think that, uh, you know, of course, these pieces were literally mopped at the, uh, you know, at, at the Moroso stand. And, and it really um, launched, I would say, our career. Because, of course, we were working informally together before. But I think Patrizia Moroso was the first person who really gave us our first opportunity. And I think that also says a lot about Patricia because she's one of those people, she doesn't wait for other people to work with an up and coming design team. She prefers it if she discovers people. And I, I think she really enjoys the fact that she might be the person who kick-started someone's career. And she has a lot of confidence in her own vision. Which I could have, in a way, the Charpoy collection was launched 10 years ago. And, um, there are some very interesting coincidences in, in the way we work together and the way we go through textiles together, in my opinion, because, for example, uh, sorry, my English is not that good, I'm Italian, so I'm like this a little bit. Uh, for example, this was a project that uh, Ricek, the one that fits to Charpoy and some other piece, to Modernista, was a work uh, that we expected to do like a small capsule collection for Quadrat because Actually, Quadrat is, a, is like a very is like a jumbo in textile. So for every production, it takes years and years of trials and tests and Martin Davis and what the hell of light in north, south, east, and west. So for for a creative process, it can be a little bit uh, a restrained field because you have to feel that the colors and the texture that you're going to use should at last and should at, uh, to be fitted to the creator after years and years. So. This is one first uh, approach. But then, by chance, when we launched the, the, the My Beautiful Backside, the second big project that uh, 
Nipa and Johnny, the first big project, of course, of uh, working yeah. together because Charfoy was more a work done in India and I love the idea that she was Indian, I love India. And um, living in uh, that field uh, where Asha Sarabai was my leader, so I, I, I admire the work for his Imiake plantation collection. For me, Asha was connecting words. Hmm? Yeah. And so for me, it still was a dream, and it, was sti it is still a dream to work together because somehow India is, a, is a in between, in between Italy and Japan, in between uh, in Italy and the world. So uh, the, the culture that is coming from uh, Indian textiles for me is, uh, uh, I have no words to say that I love India. Mm? Uh, but then, uh, coincident by, by coincidence, mm, every time I do some text new textiles for Quadrat is the moment to do something new together. What to say? It's a lovely coincidence. So, uh, working w in, in the case of uh, in, uh, specifying the work of my little backside was a work like to be in an atelier with a Nipa and a Johnny saying that this is the shape. How can we dress the shape? Hmm? What what can we select? <laughs> Please come do to the. Yes. Okay. So, are you okay? Do you do, had you finished talking about the previous project, or are you happy to jump I on think to that this um, one? Actually, I think it's really interesting that the Charfoy collection has been relaunched after 10 years and yeah. with, the, with the fabric of... And uh, this is, these are the products over on this over side? On this the yes, kind of and of course also it's all the, the Czech uh, in the Modernista collection. And I think the beautiful backside sofa, in fact, came um, very much as a result of uh, this Team miniature work. painting yeah. where we saw these uh, people, um, uh, you know, this couple sitting on a on a set of cushions, almost floating in air. Typical Indian miniature painting, no mm. gravity, no sense of what is behind you, mm. what is in front. You know, these exactly like my drawings, in fact. Um, and, and what we did, in a way, was a composition of uh, cushions that are floating in space. And although we started from this um, you know, miniature painting, the final result, in a way, is nowhere close to the miniature painting. And I think that's something that's very important yeah. when Johnny and I start working together, is that the end result is not from a particular place, and you can't place it. And of course, at that point, when we were looking for the fabrics for the collection, Julio's um, uh, 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 remix collection was being launched by Quadrat. And it was the beginning of our relationship, and I remember feeling so jealous when I saw this mm -hmm. textile. I loved it so much, I couldn't believe someone had done this really beautiful collection, um, which almost felt like um, fashion fabric and, yeah. and, and suits. And, and, um, and of course, that kind of, in a way, also started our collaboration with Julio. We used to run around in, uh, in Morozo looking for textiles that we loved, and I remember and combinations and also I think that Julio and I we would constantly challenge each other and and you know we had to learn to like also what the other person was showing the other yeah. and I think there was a lot of uh, conversation uh, at that level and um, and you can see that of course we didn't just use the remix in the same way that it was we also printed yeah with silver foil on it, and we started adding details. And, and what we love is the fact that we can take a fabric that's designed by another designer, and he doesn't also mind what we do with it, and how we used on the collection uh, uh, this fabric. And I think it was a lot of work also. There's a lot of textile colors in here, and, and I, I remember distinctly the day that we were in Morozo, where every button and its relation to the cushion, and everything was very, very precise, the double piping, just in, you know, you have the piece in front of you. Not often we have a talk and have a piece in front of us. So um, this was the first time we actually collaborated together. Maybe Johnny. Johnny, die. Johnny, Johnny. Okay. So. Talk about how you make things. Yeah. Well, I think paper planes chair, which you can see around, is an interesting one because it, it really exemplifies how Nipper and I work and how we play to each other's strengths. And Nipper is very good, I, I would say, in the, the two-dimensional. Um, she draws, she paints, she makes these amazing collages and puts colors together and, and materials in two dimensions. And quite often I, I look at her drawings and I get inspired and I create something three-dimensional from, from those. And in this case, it, um, this project started as a two-dimensional surface with this graphic pattern with the, the crystals laid out along the pattern. And of course, we were invited by Swarovski as most people are at some point in their career um, to, to, crea <laughs> to, to create something. And um, 
we, the idea was to create a, a piece that would appeal to architects. And we thought, well, you know, how do we get architects to enjoy crystal? So we thought maybe the best way to get architects to enjoy crystal is not to see the crystals. <laughs> and so we created this uh, printed graphic pattern with crystals laid alongside. So you only see the effect of the light and not the crystal itself. However, fabric aside, it was now time to create a chair because we were working with Moroso, the third partner. That and fabulous drawings? <laughs> but the final thing is, Yes. Was this an after drawing or a before drawing? It was a before drawing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's an after drawing? Oh, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> so this is what actually happened. No, this is a really good <laughs> question after drawing because sometimes when Jonathan does a beautiful shape, you know, and when he's work, we are working on designs. I very surreptitiously make a little sketch in my sketchbook, which is an after drawing, and then I sign it ND. Okay, and he always says, Jonathan says, if anyone ever looks at the archive of our work, they'll think you came up with all the ideas. Yeah. That's why he asked, is that an after drawing? Oh, it's a reverse copyright <laughs> claim then. <laughs> yeah. We, Rather we than a, this is what it was supposed to look like, we'll but you actually draw what it did look we like. Operate, we operate in a very <laughs> subtle way here, you know, just getting it out there. Do you, do you back <laughs> no, date it as well? 200 people, <laughs> just so you know. Just for the record. For the record. Yeah. But um, so going from two dimensions, we were interested, we, how do we make a chair? So we just made these very simple cuts because we had this check pattern. We had to make a very simple three-dimensional form from that. So it was uh, pattern cutting, really. And I think that's something that really... Um, so Sorry, can, you guys over there, if, can you, do you mind being quiet, please? If, if you're not interested in the talk, there's other things going on around Clark and Will. That's okay. We, we'll, we'll battle through it. Yeah. <laughs> So I bring a three-dimensional um, aspect to our partnership, and this is how I work. I work with my hands, I work with um, wire and card and wood, and, and work very much in a sculptural way with my hands and, and three-dimensionally. And that is coming together with a very kind of graphic um, approach of Nippa, who is really good at the, the identity, the direction that a piece should take, and this kind of combination is, is really what, what makes it work for us. I always complain because our studio is always this big mess because we're making so many mock-ups and prototypes. And I think that one thing that we really kept in, in the studio is we make a lot of mock-ups. And, and we immediately are able to define the space that we are in uh, uh, through the, the, the pieces that we make. And it also means that when Patricia, in fact, came to the studio, she sat on the mock-up. And she could feel that it's right. And she said yes to the chair immediately. So it, it's a very immediate way to... Um, uh, to also come up with ideas. And of course with this chair, it's open on one side, but it's also protected on the other. And you can sit on it in many different ways. It's also very sculptural. And I remember when we did this chair, and I think it's still one of my favorite pieces. And you know, um, it was also going very far in, from my beautiful backside sofa, because I think also as designers, you know, the moment you say you're from India and maybe that your work is influenced from India, people always want to put you in some kind of a, um, what would you say, Marcus? Tiffin. Tiffin box. You no, know, so, you know, people are trying to kind of... Um, pigeonhole. Yes, pigeonhole. pigeonhole you. Can you repeat? Tiffin hole. And um, <laughs> Tiffin hole. You know, so in a way, I think it's, it's, it was also very important for me um, and for us to say that although that is important to us, there are many other things that influence our work and it's something that we really try to do um, throughout our, uh, our short career. Uh, what is Objects of devotion. Uh, of course, you know, working with um, companies like Morozo and the other brands that we work with, we also find that it's important to um, also work on pieces because sometimes, of course, at the beginning of the, your career, you work on very extreme pieces for a production company. And of course, that's not necessarily the platform to um, uh, to present those ideas. So in parallel to the production work that we do, we also work with Gallery Creo in Paris. And I think we realized, of course, it takes you time to realize that there are certain pieces which are meant to be gallery pieces and, um, and can be maximum you. And then the production pieces also have a very big commercial um, uh, you know, criteria mm. for them to be specified. So we're doing this very... Um, uh, sorry? Yeah, it's an ongoing project. And um, we like the idea of designing a, a product that is born out of a space, um, hence the title of the, the talk. 
And we chose the buildings in Chandigarh by Le Corbusier. Um, the High Court building, the Assembly building, all part of this um, capital complex. And we imagined objects to be designed for this space. I mean, it, it was a very utopian vision. It was a 50s building commissioned by Nehru. Um, it was meant to be an expression of Indian modernism and this kind of utopian vision going forward. Um, and, it, and it was, and it was very extreme. And, and yet, at the same time, contemporary Chandigarh feels a little kind of um, out think, of place, no? I think that, of course, what's amazing about Chandigarh is that uh, only the Western architects like it, <laughs> you know? And the people who live in Chandigarh, they think, what is this thing, you know? We live in this monster. And, uh, and of course, you know, there isn't, you know, these buildings, the concrete is falling apart, and there's a lot of beauty in these buildings, but also in some ways they are unloved, these buildings, by the people of Chandigarh itself. So we created a series of objects called Objects of Devotion, which are our offerings of love to Chandigarh. And we also created these objects as objects that we imagined that would be in this space. So we created this incredible jacquard that's made in Italy, which um, uh, has all the elements from the city made into a collage. There were drawings that I did. And, um, it's a very complex jacquard. Right? It's actually a very complex jacquard. And I think that, again, I've come to textiles you know, uh, not really being trained in textiles, a little bit like Julio, not half as good as him. But, um, you know, I feel that I have a feeling for textiles. I like color, and for a very long time, I actually um, used to get very upset when people used to say that you're good at color or textiles, because I thought I'm an industrial designer. I can do technical drawings, you know. Uh, I don't want to do color and textiles, you know, girls do that. And, um, you know, but finally I gave in in the end because I realized it's something I love and it's something that's really, uh, I enjoy as well. So if any of you out there are good at color and textiles, go out and do it also because there are many opportunities and there are very few people who can do it we well. To we survive to textiles. So. Absolutely. <laughs> To celebrate our project, Objects, Objects of Devotion, we've commissioned a, an Indian miniature painter to create a piece um, to, to be presented with, with uh, the items. And here we have a view looking out from the High Court in Chandigarh. And we, wa we like this idea of, of an Indian miniature painting that is ambiguous, that you cannot tell the, the period. So we have three periods in this painting. This is the sketch of the painter that we've commissioned. Um, and he's now working on the final thing. And so we've combined the mythical world of Radha and Krishna. And Krishna is um, beckoning to Radha, you can see on the left side, sitting on the objects of devotion day bed. And then the second era is the era in which the painting, w the, the, the building was made. So that's the 50s. So we'll see some makers of the building. And then the final um, era is the present with some of our objects. So this is an ongoing project. And, and of course, the artist that we are working with is a very traditional artist. He's, um, you know, in India, uh, traditionally artists are from fifth or sixth generation. You know, their father painted and, you know, so they kind of learn. It's a trade almost that's passed down. And this is what Shamiji actually paints normally. So he was very excited when we came to him to do the painting of, um, uh, of our project. Does it work on miniatures or which miniatures? Is it? so yeah. it's in fact, you know, the painting also that you see, you know, the, it's really at that very very small scale. Um, so it's very exciting in a way that you know we do the gallery projects, then we've commissioned Shamiji to make this painting for us, and um, and we are creating the objects. And I think Jonathan and I really try to um, really enjoy and love the things we do, you know? If we want to make these objects, we make them, and we make sure that there is space in our studio to do that. So we are not always just saying, oh, these are the projects we are working for somebody. We work on many projects for ourselves as well. Okay, can I just interrupt? Guys, if, if, you, if you're talking, it's, it's really disruptive, okay? It's there are people trying to listen. Yeah. The Moroso crew, do you mind just going around and telling people to shush and, and just, just leave, go somewhere else if, you, um, if you're not enjoying this? They're upstairs. Oh my God, can someone tell them to be quiet? Maybe we can sing something. Yeah. It's okay. It's kind of distracting. No, but it is a little Sorry bit Sorry about that. But no, no, I think it's quite good. I prefer. Can you hear us? Can you hear us okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So maybe you should uh, talk about it. So what we've done, in fact, we're talking about also the projects 
the gallery projects we are saying, uh, showing are also in some ways related to modernista. And uh, Jonathan and I, we love architecture. And I think that it's something, of course, I think secretly in my, um, I would have liked to be an architect, you know. Uh, yeah, I didn't, you know, I, uh, I got in, but I saw my design school in India and I, the, the building was nicer, so I just start, decided to study design <laughs> instead of architecture. <laughs> I'm like, this space is better, I'm going to study here, you know. Uh, but maybe you can, can we talk. skip through this? Bit? Yeah, you can if you want. I don't want to repeat ourselves because, you know, um, but this is Impossible Wood, the uh, chair that we designed in well, a few years ago. And the idea was to work. The idea was to work with uh, liquid wood, which is a very interesting material, 100% biodegradable. We were asked to do a plastic chair, and we thought, let's do a chair that can be really 100% returned to the earth. And so we found this material. It was fantastic, but unfortunately, well, that came later. So the language of this chair was very much um, coming from the tonne or coming from the bent wood uh, furniture. Uh, to find the language because plastic can be anything so you have to find some narrative when you're working with plastic So we worked with these forms and these uh, strips of, of material to create these organic shapes that could resemble wood and The idea was to mold it in liquid wood The problem was that liquid wood is a very brittle material So unfortunately it, it would have just snapped and, and broken apart so we in the end we had to resort to using polypropylene which is why we called the chair Impossible Wood, because it was impossible to make in wood and impossible to make in liquid wood. So we had to make a plastic chair. <laughs> plastic fantastic. Back to square one. <laughs> it's gone. There she is. Yes. Mm. I think we'll just show a couple of projects um, which are not from Moroso, but. Um, I think again are um, have been very um, important in the projects that we've done in our studio uh, and I feel that beauty is everywhere and um, and you know whenever you're traveling in India or Brazil and many other countries in the world you see these uh, this very informal architecture with corrugated sheet and in India in fact a lot of shanty towns are completely made of this material but the people, in fact, who use this material, they think it's a beautiful material. They think it's a prestigious material. And, um, and I, you know, seeing this, this is, in fact, a scaffold that was outside the Humayu's tomb, which is a World Heritage Site building. And, um, and looking at this um, composition, uh, we drew this cabinet, which has got these sun-faded colors in this corrugated. This came before the... This came before the object. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the cabinet. It's called Shanti. And um, uh, where is the Shanti? You haven't shown it opening. So anyway, it's got all these uh, doors, but it opens in a very intelligent uh, way, and it's, it's very useful. Um, and I think that, um, of course, some of our pieces, you know, they are not commercially very successful. This is one example. You know, of course, um, people love it, and, uh, you know, it's published a lot, but you know, maybe you sell 10 in a year. And, but it's really important to do these projects, you know, and I think yeah. that, um, uh, because if you do every project that's just about selling, you know, m maybe it'll be a certain kind of project. Uh, but of course, we should have done it as a gallery piece next time, you know, we're, we're constantly learning. We learn a lot, every day we learn something new. Yeah. Um, and I think that when, in 2012, um, so I think this idea of creating our own space is still there. It's something that Jonathan and I want to do. Um, we just got back from LA where we just spent all our time not going to see the Hollywood sign or the studios. We, we went to see all the case study houses from Rudolf Schindler, um, from uh, Frank Lloyd Wright, Richard Neutra, and uh, also the Eames House, which are all, um, you know, and, and it's incredible how many patrons of architecture there were in LA and how much legacy of design is in that city where people just think LA is about films. Any case, in 2012, we, we were invited by the city of Cologne and IMM I to, uh, to pioneer this, uh, to, no, debut this project. My English is not very good. Um, <laughs> It's 
so funny. It happens to me all the time. Uh, is to, to design our vision of a perfect home or an ideal home. And, uh, and of course, for Jonathan and me, uh, uh, an ideal home is not a monument in the middle of the countryside, you know, standing tall. I imagined neighborhoods in India, in Rome, in Japan, where you encounter a building, it's sandwiched in between different buildings. And depending on how you approach your building, you know, your experience of it is very different. So we imagined our home in an urban neighborhood, sandwiched in between buildings, and something that had an organic and org sort of occupied a very organic space with a central courtyard in between. And we imagine that the rooms and the houses uh, in the house are according to activity. So whether it's eating, sleeping, bathing, dressing, um, uh, well-being. And, um, and I think we, this was our original plan for the house with this courtyard in the middle. Do you want to talk about it? This was our yeah. Design. I mean, it was also that... Um, post-it note diagram was also a way for us to think about the relationships between activities in the home and how you know we could change that and bring different relationships together for example bathing and 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 kitchen came together because a lot of the ingredients that we cook with can also be applied to the body so we had this philosophy that was very much kind of looking at uh, new relationships between different activities in the home um, so this was the, the, the plan, finally, with a central courtyard and these kind of activities um, situated around the central courtyard. And in the central courtyard, we had my beautiful backside sofa. And go forward. And we had a dressing space. This was Nippa's idea. She wanted to have a space dedicated to dressing and grooming and looking after oneself and a space where you could spend time with yourself and make time for yourself. And so being an open space, we had to create this um, sort of environment through the object that we designed, which was Chandler, the dressing table. Can you stop talking, please, when I'm talking? I mean, the idea, of course, was to we wanted to... We wanted to also say that often we think of daily chores, you know, getting dressed now, you know, you're just kind of grabbing, you know, your stuff and, and leaving the house. And we thought that how could we make some of these daily chores or things that we have to do into rituals? And of course, we don't feel beautiful every day when we wake up. So we had this rose tinted mirror on those days, you know, where, where you want, you know, you didn't want to look at yourself in the mirror. And of course, this piece, again, is very three-dimensional. And we like this idea that furniture, you can create spaces through furniture and, um, and, and create this, uh, these pieces that you can view from many angles. It's one of my favorite pieces, actually. I love this you piece. This simply, it's one of my favorite pieces. Yeah. Your production. Yeah. Can you stop talking? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is that? <laughs> You'll get your chance afterwards, Julia. <laughs> so this is, of course, our... Um, our more recent collections with Moroso, and I think it's our 10 years now that we've worked with Moroso. Uh, and I think it's really incredible that we've, uh, we've done so many pieces with Moroso and very important pieces for our studio with them. And I think that has a lot to do with Patrizia. I think that she really inspires a lot of loyalty in people, and she also gives you time as a designer. And Patrizia always says it takes five years for a design to really register and do well. So it's not like when she works with you, she instantly wants your design to be a success. I think she understands the time it takes for, um, uh, she always says it takes architects five years to uh, think the piece is normal and um, accept, and they've seen it around, and then they start using it in projects. And it's interesting, it's happening with the paper planes chair. We did it in 2012, 10, and now we are seeing this chair specified in many spaces. Um, so I think, it's also something we have to get used to that we think the design is normal or you know why should it be uh, anything odd we think it should be immediate so rahul our son is going to be very happy when we <laughs> are no longer here no? <laughs> 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 but this is um this is an after drawing this one by nipa no no this is a tracing of your drawing. Uh, tracing of my drawing <laughs> <laughs> Okay, a third, a third category that I wasn't aware of, <laughs> you know, the blatant cheek, you know, just, <laughs> I'm tired of making my own version, I'll just copy Johnny's. 
So, um, we, I mean, I, I, as a journalist, I come lots of, I come across lots of um, instances of copying of design, yeah. but not within the same no, no. couple. Oh, there is, it's usually. rife. Believe me, it's rife. And Jonathan uh, makes me sometimes. He said, "Now, can you just, can you do this in your, in, in your way, you know?" And um, <laughs> this. So this chair is really about. It says gusto down there. I think that was about a gust of wind. A, gust of wind, a piece that's really enveloping you like a, um, a 16th century warship sail, you know. Um, we imagine people on numbers of these um, in, in a large space um, as if people are um, sailing away in these chairs, you know, cocooned by these chairs. There it is, Armada. Yeah. These are the ships that made it back to Akaruna. Um, bit of history there. But I think also again with this chair, when you sit on it, when you sit on this chair, and I think you should try it because all the pieces are upstairs as well. Again, we are creating a space through the piece, and when you sit on it, you automatically feel the level of uh, sound, uh, surround sound really goes down. And I think with some of these pieces, of course, sometimes Patrizia Moroso you know, gives you a completely free hand and, you know, you go to her with an idea. But also sometimes she really uh, asks for things. And I prefer it when she actually asks for uh, a project that she thinks is important for the collection. Because also we want to do work that is important uh, for Moroso. You're right. In a way, Patricia, I work with Patricia, I've been working with her since 20 years now. So we celebrate our jubilee in co cooperation. <laughs> And it's a lovely word. Patricia is very intuitive. She's very feminine. She's a Pisces with ascendant in Laio. I am Laio and Laio. So sometimes we fight. But by the other hand, she's able to evoke and provoke a discussion on design. So her briefs are quite subtle, general. Now I want to have a chair, uh, a seating chair. I want to have a backrest chair, high rest chair. I need something for a lobbyist. I need something. But my idea, you know, feel free to design what you want to design, something like this, no? But of course, in the confidence of making design and having a cooperation, a teamwork, means that you understand that she's asking this to you because yes. it's you that you can do this. Yes. yes. And with me, it's the same. I, um, you know, I can be very allergic to textiles. Sometimes I eat textiles because when a textile is part of, I can't say, I love beige, I love neutral colors. <laughs> I love jacquard, I love velvet, I love this. No, 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 it's not like this. A textile is the skin of an object, so every time to work, working with a textile is a big responsibility in a way, very pleasant for me, I like it. But in a way, every object has got a skin, no? Like yeah. these objects, like uh, the table that we did this research, selecting a, 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 a leather in this case, it's a printed leather, a Safiano leather. We have some love together, we, like, we love accessories, we love shoes, we like uh, things that have a past. Uh, we love tradition, uh, modulated, not uh, dusty tradition. But tra tailoring and... Tailoring, what, what, everything that is gone, made to measure. And so for that reason, of course, for me, working with people like these, like Jonathan and Niba, it means that I can express myself. With other designers, can be it's less, it's more rigid maybe, but of course the family of, uh, say, the... the, the, the the team of Moroso, the group of designers, are normally love to work with textiles and materials in general. No, so. But I think that also what we find working, um, you know, of course we are working with Patrizia Moroso, but whenever we go to Moroso, in fact, Giulio is there in the meeting, and I think that for us it's very important also from an aesthetic proportion, visual point of view. Uh, you know, we ask you all the time, and you know, Giulio also has a very um, uh, strong opinion about not just the, the textile, but also um, the identity of the piece through tailoring, for example, and what materials to use. And I remember when we first started working on the Armada, Patricia wanted to use a knit fabric. And I said, no, this no, is, no, no, you know, let's make Jamais. something that's very um, uh, much about craftsmanship and you have to really know how to work with the leather. And, and in some ways, I think, the knit, I don't know, I'm allergic to knit, <laughs> but not allergic, but somehow for me I feel that you can stretch the knit and it's kind of a little bit cheating when you're covering, uh, maybe like I'm wrong. Traveling socks sometimes, no, this knit so it can be not easy to use. But of course I understand Niba because she wanted maybe more a kind of solid aspect, like an yes. architectural textile. 
And NEET is never nice. It's, it's very for easy going. It's really yes. nice. It's for Friday evening. Yes. It's not for every day's life. No? I love NEET. Eh? I wear yes. a lot of technical and items. Works. But it depends. I think working with Moroso and um, also with Giulio, when I say Moroso, I mean Patrizia, Giulio, it also opened up our world to Quadrat. And I know that Patrizia and Giulio kept saying to uh, Anders from Quadrat, you should work with Doshi Levine, you should work with Doshi Levine. It took them a long time to work with us, you know. And, um, but we finally launched our collection in September with Quadrat, a range of curtains. And I think, again, we, in fact, wanted to do finishes for the wall. And we said, why don't we do a series of finishes which are like cast concrete or perforated metal or um, brushed al anodized aluminum and, uh, or a rendered wall. And um, so we made these series of castings. And did you have? So in fact, our, um, we did a series of about 30 or 50 texture castings that we made in the studio. And we presented them to Quadra. And at this point, they just kept them in their studio for a month or two months and saying, we love them, but we don't know what to do with them. You know? And how does that become a textile? And, um, and then they came back to us. So this would be typically how, you know, when we worked on the knit, for example. This is Nipper's desk. <laughs> <laughs> Nipper was picking up bits of colored paper and punching them with the whole punch and trying to create this kind of um, hard architectural material palette and thinking about color at the same time and layering color and putting you know the the solid color behind the perforated color I mean I think although we said earlier that Nipper's approach was uh, is two-dimensional and very much about sort of drawing I think it, in a way it's it's also sculptural the way she's sort of layering materials and colors and thinking multi-dimensionally about um, surface quality and color I think the other thing that um I think apart from architecture, of course, I also wish I was an artist. And of course, I, you know, so whenever we do colors in the studio, I actually mix the colors and I paint them. And um, in fact, one of my assistants is here and we, we are working on a new collection for Quadrat. And Galia and I, we mixed 70 colors. Galia, how many? We were madly working, hundreds of colors, sitting there, mixing them, and then finding the match for them. And, you know, and we often say to ourselves, why do we create such a difficult way to work for ourselves? You know, but, but you, you have to, because that's how you can really challenge yourself um, in how you do colors. I think the crowd's getting a little bit restless. So why don't we just finish up the, the rest of the room yes. and um, let everyone go a bit crazy because it's getting hot down yeah. here. Final collection, anyway, that we've here done we with Moroso. And, and here it is. And thanks for coming. <laughs> no, no, and of course, <laughs> <laughs> Modernista from. Um, I think modernism works really well Paulista in hot climate. Modernista. And in a way, we imagined yeah. Casa Modernista in in Sao Paulo, this amazing building. And um, and I think this sofa is very much uh, inspired from the modernist architectural sofas, but with many. Um, sartorial details that again we worked on together using Julio's fabrics and um, you know so please enjoy uh, maybe Julio you want to say something no, I think it's time to enjoy him but I think also it's I want to, to sorry I want to, to say uh, don't spill any uh, don't uh, spill any wine on the no, no, pieces no, no, no. I think it's important to understand that the work on the surface is, is as important as work on the sub substance of the object. That, that's all, no? And you know the story of uh, Ray and Charles Eames and the third element that was Alexander Girard. Sometimes I feel like a Girard working with old people like you because it's, it's always lovely to, uh, to care about what is regional, what is international, what is peculiar, what is something that has to be spread around. I was so jealous when I saw this collection. I said, Julio, you did it again. So beautiful. I mean, you should see the check, the subtlety with which he's done the check. It's like a tie and dye and ikat. And there's so many ideas in there. But enjoy. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That didn't go at all according to plan, but I hope you enjoyed it anyway. Thanks very much, Nipper, Jonathan, Julio, and to Moroso for hosting us once again.